All right, should be recording now. All right, well, thank you all for joining me today. Um, if you don't know me yet, uh, I'm Taylor Montalto. I am the programming director for the Charlotte Film Festival. Uh, Lisa is an alumni of our festival. She's sent us some really amazing work over the years. Um, so we're really excited to have Uprooted as part of the program this year. And we're really excited to have you guys all here virtually doing it this year. Um, so I guess I'll just start, uh, everyone kind of introduce yourself, your contribution on the film and where you're tuning in from. Um, so I'll start and then I can, I'll, I'll hand over so we know who's going next. <laughs> um, so I'm Lisa Domarive, I'm the producer, I'm here in LA. Um, I'll hand over to Kadifa, the director. Hi hey, Lisa, I'm Kadifa, I'm the director and I'm in London. Zach? Hi, I'm Zach Nemerin. Um, I'm the original concept guy. I did additional choreography for the film and uh, co-creator, and I'm also in London. Joan? <laughs> I'm Joan Gil Amorim. I'm the editor and I am in London as well. Matt? Hey, I'm Matt Simpkins. I am in New York City and I was the director of photography. Fabulous. All right, um, so I just want to say, um, I just watched it last night and I really loved the film. I thought it was a really unique editing structure, especially the opening sequence. So I was wondering um, if you guys could talk to that, um, I guess, Joan, what, what made you decide to start the film on black and just to kind of hear the, the audio. That was really cool. Well, it was funny because Kadeep and I, that's actually one of the first things we cut um, and it changed very little throughout the whole course of it, which is kind of funny because I was expecting to come back and do, th but I think it just set the tone so well. So uh, Kadifa and I were in the room and um, we had kind of a few ideas of how we wanted to just start off and set it. So we were, we were trying and we were narrowing down what was being said. And actually it was because uh, it's sometimes if you're paying attention to the video as well, it's so jumpy mm -hmm. and we were cutting up certain things and so we were listening to it in black and Monsal is such a strong amazing voice and everything he was saying and Kadeep and I kind of looked at each other and she was like this is amazing just listening to it particularly because what he's talking about is what feeling and hearing sound and rhythm and we we're just kind of were letting it wash over us and then not having anything distracting you on screen just was so powerful just in those initial kind of few minutes that we were cutting that part we were like i i think we should start it off in black like i mean kadifa what's your recollection of it as well but exactly that <laughs> <laughs> very cool very cool um, so I guess, Kadifa, Zach, Lisa, um, how kind of did this concept come to be? What made you decide, okay, we're going to make this history of jazz film? It starts with Zach, so I'll let Zach start. Okay. Um, so, so I've been a West End musical theatre performer for nearly 20 years, and we've all been trained by the same people in London. Um, I'm also a teacher, and in my mid-30s, I went back and, and re-studied and wanted to do a degree just for some reason. And I kind of like made my degree and my thesis really about jazz dance and, and, and me as a jazz dancer and, and all the people that I've worked with over the years. And I suddenly realized that actually the history and the roots of the art form that most of us follow and, and, and perform isn't really, or hasn't really been explored that much or isn't really taught. Um, and I just wanted to kind of like create something that delves deeper into into where all of this came from because i think the the information wasn't necessarily readily available unless you really search for it um especially for my students and stuff so um we got together um as me and kadifa uh, and i was discussing with kadifa and then we kind of like came up with more of a concept and it kind of evolved over time and then we met lisa and 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 uh and the rest is history as it were <laughs> Yeah, I mean, the, the, yeah, so it's Zach and Kadifa had, had been working on it for about two years. I think you guys had been developing it. And then um, I knew Zach, I didn't know Kadifa. And then they contacted me. I used to live in New York and then I just moved to LA. Uh, they were in New York. Um, and it was a year after I'd, I'd uh, Matt and I had worked together. And um, we'd just made it early morning the year before. Um, 
so uh that's when I was like oh I I think we should meet Matt <laughs> I'm not there but so I set a meeting up with them and Matt in New York and then we Skyped used to Skype in those days um when we Skyped uh and yeah and it kind of just went from there I just kind of wanted them to go a bit broader because I thought it'd be great to do the whole kind of yeah let's go naively not really knowing what I was asking <laughs> but, gl but glad that I opened that can of worms because I think uh the rabbit holes it led us down made it really really interesting yeah mm. awesome awesome um so I guess for Kadifa, Joan, um, given that jazz dance is such a broad topic, how did you guys decide how you kind of want to structure the film and what interviewees you wanted to focus on? There are a lot of subjects in the film, so how piecing their different sound bites together, how did you kind of go about that process? That was a lot of um, sort of just back and forth and cutting and, and yeah. we sort of once we got the kind of timeline, a chronological timeline and we spent time just putting world events, dance events on a board and then just going through every interview, watching it and kind of just picking out moments that we liked and then Joan just worked her magic, just sort of building this story. Um, so it was a, yeah, it was a fascinating process and working out bits that you thought would be vital or be in, go because suddenly they didn't make sense in the context of it all just went right and that was a real kind of really interesting kind of journey that, mm -hmm. that we went on I think and it was it a was completely brand oh sorry it was a brand new journey for me just because um I actually was not a dancer and didn't know about jazz dance so you know Kadifa gave me a stack of books and uh which was so helpful and and you know I was every interview I was listening to it was the second or third time Kadifa would have heard these interviews anyways, but I was hearing them for the first time and just finding out all these amazing, interesting things. So it was really fun to go on that process with somebody who already knew it. But then also, like she said, you're kind of finding out different things as you're going or she, you know, would be in the interviews and you think one thing, but then when we get into the edit suite after hearing everybody, it is like, oh, okay, well, actually that doesn't play a role, but this theme keeps cropping up or, you know, and then yeah. you just keep kind of whittling down and, and then you've got your story. Yeah, one thing that worked to our benefit was that we actually shot over the course of about two years, mm -hmm. but we started the edit before we finished shooting. Gotcha. It's kind of the way it just ended up happening. So what was great was we had these big chunks of filming blocks and we would film and then in between those we'd um kind of all just chat and kind of figure out okay well next up we know we have e we have these people that we're going to be working with so we could kind of tailor well, what do we still need what do we need to pull from mm -hmm. and then once we got into the edit with joan we were able to um, expand that conversation to well what are we still needing to use as a transition or what are we missing or or what segments do we need so then we could actually tailor our last few blocks specifically to those elements that uh, once they got into the edit, they found uh, were lacking. Very cool, very cool. There is a connection to Charlotte, North Carolina in this. Um, you guys speak to how UNCC Associate Professor of Dance, Karen Hubbard, kind of came on board. Yeah, we were really lucky. I mean, um, we, we, so we got UNCC and UNCD G. So uh, we've got those both those universities and there was so, we did it in a day actually. Because <laughs> our budget. <laughs> Although we did arrive the night before to be fair and had um, PF chance, um, <laughs> which was a highlight of, <laughs> of the trip um, for our sound guy, um, uh, which was a running theme. Um, but no, uh, Karen Hubbard, uh, so the, the book, uh, Lindsay Garino and Wendy Oliver, Jazz Dance, uh, the history of the Roots to the Branches was a, a real inspiration for the film. And we went and we got a lot of people from that book in the film. And, and it was people from that, there's a real community there that kind of led us to other people. Um, and Karen was one of them. And she was amazing because she had that connection to Pepsi Buffel and no one else kind of had that real, you know, history of authentic jazz um and so she was amazing and, and it was also as tom radabat at uh, university of buffalo 
he then had told us to talk to Robin G, who is at UNCG. Mm -hmm. So because then we made that connection, we were like, well, let's try and do that in the same day, which was amazing. And their facilities, again, are, are stunning. This dance studio was just insane for British people. <laughs> or even studios in New York, I have to say, um, which are narrow and slippy floors. You know, they've got this studio that we shot in that there's like barn ceilings and we were just all like, oh my God. Um, and she taught an African dance um, class. And then we spoke to some students that she, cause she taught a dance on camera kind of mm -hmm. course. And that was a really, you know, to have Karen and then that in a day was, you know, our trip to North Carolina was well worth it. It was just incredible. But it was all from everyone from that book, which was like a key book for us. Um, yeah, but they're both, they're both amazing people. And they've both got tickets to the, the festival, by the way, I've made sure that. So. <laughs> Very cool. Very cool. Um, Matt, uh, what, do you have any types of challenges or any interesting anecdotes of, uh, things you faced while filming and, and also a favorite part, favorite, um, performance or? You got to tell them about Chicago. <laughs> so yeah, I guess Chicago, it's kind of a mix between favorite and challenging. We flew into Chicago to work with, um, Giordano Dance Chicago and, um, I I come from a dance background, so when I was in uh, college, they came to our university and I got to work with them then, back then. So I was really excited to go and kind of um, feel their energy again, but little did I know that I'd be right smack dab in the middle of them. I like to tell people it was like being in the middle of a hurricane. <laughs> So we, we get there and we um, normally what we would do is if we knew we were filming um, a combination of some sort, we would, you know, watch it a few times and Kadeep and I would talk about how we want to shoot it, you know, that type of stuff. And uh, they, we asked them, they said, can we, can we see what you have prepared for us? And they said, well, we have four numbers prepared, but they're like 20 minutes long each. And we only have about two hours there with them. So we said, great, let's just go. And Kadifa said, jump in there. So I went full handheld just in amongst them. I talked to them before and said, let me know if you're coming my way, if I'm in your way. But um, it was great. It was, uh, I don't really remember much of those <laughs> sequences. Um, I was just trying to keep everyone safe and, and get some um, footage in focus. <laughs> and, uh, but hearing, hearing them breathe, feeling the sweat, spin off their body feeling the ground move as they move um those all just bring back floods of memories of being a dancer and that was the type of thing that we always wanted to try and capture with the dance was try and capture it as if the audience is another dancer with them mm -hmm. not shooting it straight up proscenium locked off kind of boring so to speak, wanted to get in there and get in the middle of them. So that, yeah, I was definitely in the middle of probably 20 of the most talented athletic dancers in, uh, in America, just all over the place. Mm -hmm. yeah. so then you so could, was, and then, then you had part. two hours because there was a snowstorm that hit and all <laughs> the flights were being canceled. I just want to say that I didn't like, I didn't no, no. schedule him only two hours. <laughs> Just, just a little <laughs> FYI. No, no. I was in LA because I couldn't arrive till the next day and I got all these emails going, your flights have been canceled and we had to be in New York for Cheetah Rivera like two days later. So I was literally like, oh my God. <laughs> so I was like, you've got to be on the five o'clock. Get it done. And like, like, it was like hilarious. Like everything shutting down. Just stressful. And Matt, <laughs> Matt just like, okay. <laughs> With no food in his stomach either, because we couldn't find anywhere to have breakfast where they were. <laughs> <laughs> but, I I say, I say, <laughs> <laughs> but I must say, you could really see Matt's dance background whilst he was filming, because he was literally pirouetting with the cast <laughs> at the same time. It was amazing. It was really yeah, inspiring just to watch. <laughs> probably not, <laughs> probably not a pirouette, more like a... <laughs> Like, you'd, we'd only done three days in London, so that was day four of him working with Kadifa. Like, 
period, like out of the whole thing. So, um, we hadn't worked together for what, three or four months at the time yeah, yeah. in raising money. Yeah. So yeah, it wasn't, <laughs> so hey, that, that was a good way to break the ice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Under fire, I think yeah. it's <laughs> it was a lot yeah. of fun. Yeah. What's the, I was going to say, what's, what's your favorite? Or is that your, your most Well, it's a favorite experience of, of definitely filming the dancers. I mean, I, I, I think one of my favorite moments in the film from a visual and storytelling moment is um, uh, Yusha, the, the African dancer in the big green trees and nature. Mm -hmm. It's part of the opening sequence and then it's called back towards the end. Um, and that was just always, you know, one of my, the reason why it's one of my favorites, um, it was always a moment uh, in the film that had been part of our original conversations that stuck. We just didn't know exactly what it was going to be. But that feeling, that emotion, that tone was always going to be part of the film and, and probably in the beginning, um, few minutes of the film. So it was something that Kitif and I, I mean, I don't know how many times we brainstormed different concepts. We even like storyboarded over burgers and beer one night, a bunch of different like concepts. And then, and then it just, you know, it morphed into something really beautiful. Cause we, Lisa, um, you were friends with her, right? You worked with her, yeah. Yusha? Yeah. yeah, so in, we were in LA, we were filming in LA and, and Lisa said, you know, I know this amazing uh, dancer and we uh, kind of scouted for a location that we thought could potentially work for us with our time frame, And we went there and, uh, ran around and looked for, I was looking for the perfect tree. That's all I was looking for, <laughs> something, and, and found it, and we, um, and we did it, and she was amazing. It's just one of those things where everything works out. The sun was hitting the right way. She was amazing. Zach's choreography on her um, really fit the tone, and then visually, we got into the edit with it, and Joan pulled completely the perfect selects for it, and then we went into the grade with it and Kitty and I just, I mean, color grading that sequence. We always, always wanted to make sure we held on to something that felt cinematic. So it didn't all feel just documentary, talking heads, um, you know, video camera yeah. content. We wanted to make sure it had a, a quality to it where we could say like, no, this is a really cinematic feeling moment, whatever that means. It's such an ambiguous term, but mm -hmm. that moment in the film, I always watch and I go, oh, I think we, we achieved something cinematic with that moment um, visually. And then storytelling wise, the tone is just amazing. Yeah, very cool, very cool. Um, John, I, I guess this is for you as far as the research process and kind of compiling all the different archival footage that you guys kind of meshed in between. So how, how was that process and how did you decide what clips went where? <laughs> yeah, um, so that is like kind of as we go and as we built it, um, there was a few like, Kadifa came in with, I think, White Knight. She was like, this is an amazing film. You know, we have to, we have to put this in. And then um, there's some other moments that she would be like, this is an incredible moment in dance or dance history or, you know, the other three were also dancers. So everyone kind of had their own, but as we were building the sections, you know, there was a bit of, you know, we had the great interviews to work with and the beautiful footage shot by Matt. And then it's like, we'll archive add to this or, you know, like it's, it's kind of, you don't you always just want to insert it. It's just, mm -hmm. you, you really want it to further the story. So it was just kind of, as we went and that, I, I love doing that. It's so much fun kind of going down those rabbit holes, you know, and just pull like going through and, and looking and um, yeah, just, just researching everything. And just, I mean, just honestly, just going on YouTube half the time and, and finding clips and just seeing something that moved you mm -hmm. and then seeing how that fit in, you know, it's an, yeah, Khadifa would have a bunch of them in, in her head as well, like that meant something to her when she was a dancer or, you know, that she remembers. So it it was just a lot of that. It's kind of just making sure the archive actually fit choreo choreographically as well. And so we were trying to make sure that it was just this one smooth transition so you didn't notice a difference. And I, I love that Joan was able to kind of weave that in and find those moments. And that for me was really important. The archive didn't just feel like a jarring kind of take you out of what you were watching. Yeah. yeah. 
No, I was John the reason Sorry. Go ahead. how we found Joan was I watched the Whitney documentary um, and the editor, uh, uh, Sam Rice Edwards, I was, uh, but that had for every uh, time shift, they did archive shifts. Mm -hmm. They didn't, they didn't do like text. They didn't have a voiceover. They just had that. And I was just like, Oh, I love that energy. I love that. I was like, I want that. <laughs> I was like, send it to Katifa. Katifa, watch this. And so then I Googled the book at Sam and then I was like, okay, where is he? Oh my God, he's in London. Katifa's in London. Okay, I want him. <laughs> I can't quite afford him. Uh, and then, but Joan was his assistant, like head lead assistant. I was like, well, let's just put them together. And so we all had that conversation and that's, um, so I feel very lucky to have found Joan. Because that's the, that was the totally the right fit for our team. Mm -hmm. I think. Mm -hmm. cool. uh, in a way, I suppose that was the easiest way and the most kind of like interesting way to get four hundred years of history into ninety mm -hmm. three four minutes. Do you know what I mean? So creating those montages, which were beautifully created, um, just helps us tell that story and get all yeah. of those points across. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, it is, sorry, they say, you know, like, you know, pictures worth a thousand words, you know, you don't need someone to talk about the lineage when you see, you know, Michael Jackson doing the moonwalk and then just see it going backwards in time to somebody from the early 1900s doing the exact same moves, you yeah. know, and it's just like, it's, it's that kind of great stuff where you can really see each one did their own thing with it, but it's, it's the same step that's just evolved. So that, that was really fun to find as well. Those kind of things that, that like Kadifa said, just flowed together. Yeah. I love the little bit about um, Patrick Swayze's mom. That was really cool. I enjoyed that. that. <laughs> yeah. um, I guess this is kind of like for Kadifa, maybe Zach. Um, I just, I, these two quotes in particular were really profound to me. Um, the, the bit with the AIDS um, crisis, we'll never know what they could have done, how they could have changed our lives, changed the world. And then um, I think to go forward, kind of the last quote, I think to go forward, you have to look back and you have to know the history and references. If you're going to represent history, you have to know where it came from. Could you guys kind of speak to that and, and why, Joan, I guess, why, why you inserted those quotes there and, and just, the importance of that message. Yeah, I think that the last quote sums up everything that we were trying to say in the film. And when you hear that, you're just like, oh, that was, you know, one of those ones that we were just like, it's in the select, but you know it's going in and it just sums up 93 minutes beautifully. And as for the, um, the other quote, I think for me, it was just everything that I was, I guess, feeling. I don't, I don't know. There's no way to sort of explain it. Um, yeah, I, I guess the profound moment. Yeah, I think it was a profound moment that 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 you know because we were all learning on the job as we went, so we were all kind of like learning the history. Uh, mm -hmm. We knew parts of the history, but we don't know everything fully. And I think you know sometimes those little quotes kind of pop out out of out of nowhere and actually really educate you and mm -hmm. and get you thinking i think and i and think I, that was a beautiful kind of one i don't think we even realized kind of the effect that it had until some until i think the first interview brought it up and then we went well of course because it wasn't in it's not really in any of the books mm -hmm. as to how um that has been affected and we were like well why hasn't anyone spoken about this this was you know something that just came up and it was like oh let's dig, let's dig a little deeper. And it, for me, it just sort of came out and you're like, oh, that's something I never considered because it just wasn't sort of part of my history in that way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I remember all along when we were shooting, we weren't necessarily sure exactly what segments we were going to have mm -hmm. in the film, of, of course, yet. And so we were discovering a lot of things, learning a lot of things and trying to figure out where, which containers do they fit in? How can this work? And, and Kadifa's already starting to think through, um, you know, an arc. And uh, maybe it was Melanie that first maybe talked about the 80s and, and um, those dancers. And that was very early on in our, in our filming. And we, so, so I remember Kadifa and Zach and I were having a conversation like, oh, wow, this is an element Let's to figure out how to put it in. And then I remember it was um, Jerry's interview where I think it emotionally affected us. Like we knew story-wise and, and, 
just pragmatically, it was something we wanted to talk about. But it, his interview with us, um, he really got um, personal about that time in his life and the way it affected. And I think that's what sold it for us. We, we knew it was emotional. We knew it touched on us, but we were thinking as filmmakers. And then he tapped into it from a human and personal level that we went, well, there's no way this doesn't go in and there's no way we don't explore this further so then Joan and, and Kadifa ran with it and and came back with that beautiful uh, section. I think Lynn Simonson almost echoes the quote about knowing where you came from by saying well I got to where I was because of the AIDS crisis that I was able to teach and it kind of mirrors what they say at the end where you have to know where it came from to look forward you have to go back and I think Lynn kind of echoes both those quotes um, when she speaks. Yeah. And I mean, it's also it, every person who speaks in that section, I'm, I'm glad you picked up on that because I could even I, I mean, we'd sit in the suite and every time it would give us goosebumps and, and, you know, almost leave you in tears. And we really wanted that to affect people to remember that because I mean, my, my aunts and uncles and parents were in San Francisco in the eighties. And I mean, it devastated a community. It devastated everyone. And so like Kadifa said, when you're hearing people talk about the history, the first time this was mentioned, we were like, oh, of course it devastated this industry, of course, but you just don't think about that. So I think it's so important to remember all of those people who it did affect and, and ultimately kill and whose you know, names we don't know because they died way too young. So it's, it's yeah. And I think interestingly, I ended up working on the play, The Inheritance, in between our filming blocks and starting the edit. And so, the, there's a scene at the end of the first part of the play that's just heart wreck. You know, it, it, I've never heard such emotion like it, sitting in the dark and hearing a theatre full of men all around about the same age, they were all just in tears, kind of reliving what they'd been through. And it was like, okay, there's, there's really a, a human cost that I don't think anyone who's responsible has ever paid that debt that they owe people. And that's a really kind of tragic tragedy and a real sadness there. I guess um, kind of given the continued racial tensions of today's climate, um, why, why do you guys think it's so important that people know about the history of jazz, something that brings people together, you know, and, and just people of color in particular and what they've contributed and the people that no one knew about in history books. Why do you think it's important to highlight that? I think it literally just speaks to the term Black Lives Matter. And if you need proof, you shouldn't need proof. But if you do, here's a reason because everyone in the world practically does these dances, listens to this music, mm -hmm. is brought together by these rhythms. And so I shouldn't have to offer you proof of this, but here you go. Um, and that's about all I can sort of say on that. <laughs> I think one of my favorite quotes of the entire thing is Jason Samuel Smith when he's talking about, he says, you know, when you say like, well, the dance is cool, but not you as a person, you know, there's a problem with that. And that just to me sums it all up. And we don't talk about that. And we let people get away with that forever. And, and, you know, we're saying, oh, we love this thing you're doing and your whole history, but when you like, no, no, you know, so I think that just is one of my favorite quotes, the way he says it as well. Yeah. Very cool. We're getting, getting close to 5.30. Um, I, I did want to ask, um, how are you guys doing with COVID? Uh, any upcoming projects on the horizon? And what's, what's next? Well, I think, well, we're good. I mean, we're so busy with the, the films doing great, like film festival wise. So that's taking up a lot of our time we're developing a episodic version of this yeah. so um that's taking up some time too um it we're in a good place because we've got content which is which is good and we're developing content that hopefully we can we have more content to use for the episodic and then hopefully everything that we can film will be post covid <laughs> um and then, so I'm positive. Um, COVID we, negative, though. COVID <laughs> negative. <laughs> negative. <Yeah>. Positive. <laughs> <Hopes> not. <laughs> um, 
Uh, but I have to be positive because otherwise uh, it's a very slippery slope. <laughs> so let's keep it on that note. Don't don't take me down enough. <laughs> don't take me down. Enough. <laughs> These guys know me well enough. So <laughs> <Doing> well. <laughs> All things are in development. Actually, we're in really good places because we're developing stuff. So hopefully when this shit show's over, this this is like going great. And we're mm -hmm. so grateful for that. We're missing the live event. We're missing being at Charlotte. We're missing being going to Rain Dance Live and all the stuff. <laughs> like we're, we're like, mm! but we're grateful that everyone's pivoted and that it can happen anyway. And we can share our film. Um, yeah, but we're looking forward to moving forward next year. Mm -hmm. and yeah so we're in a good place we're glad we're all we're just continuing to grow really mm -hmm. yeah 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 what about, what about everybody else what are you guys working on uh, okay. everyone's working on different things which is nice and and working together and and lockdown is one of those good things that allows you time mm -hmm to actually sort of develop things and not on, not on a rush. So yeah. like, you know, about three or four things that I've got like just floating around that you can just, there's no pressure to kind of do them straight away. It's just like the ideas come and you can slowly work through them, which is nice and, and collaborate and talk and everyone has the freedom to do that. So I think that's probably the most exciting thing for all of us working on individual things during lockdown as well. Yeah, it's good. New York is not the anarchy state that some people <laughs> like to call it. but we are we are good and new york is alive and and happy and there's music and there's there's people smiling and it's um it's still a, it's still a great creative city so even during during lockdown and during covid and during the fight to kind of get back to some sort of normalcy everyone is still in an artistic mindset and creative mm -hmm. place to where that's always going to keep getting explored and pushed out and right now uh a lot of people have their eyes open for that content and people have their ears open a little bit more for the messages specifically the messages that that uprooted brings which has been a nice a nice benefit to the the lockdown and the virtual festivals honestly we've been able to have um to be able to get it to more people just not locally at the at the festivals virtually it, it's gotten out some more so it has its it has its benefits i guess mm -hmm. is there anything else you guys want to add anything you think uh viewers of the film would might find interesting after so this will be at the the tail end of the film so i after they watch the film they'll be able to see this so anything you'd like them to know well that we hope that they enjoyed it and we know that we didn't cover everything anything that we only just briefly touched on or that you only saw a visual that means that we want you to go and do the research and that it's a it's a stuck a pin in it and to tbd we'll we'll flesh it out in the episodic <laughs> i.e if you want to like pick it up and give us some money to make it next <laughs> contact me and i'll <laughs> can chat to you later <laughs> <laughs> yeah but we hope you enjoyed it and got something from it and that's you know that's what it's all about i think yeah and thanks for screening it thanks yeah. for bringing it to your audience thank yeah. you all for for joining me with this q a this was very eye-opening it's very interesting talking with you all thanks taylor of course thank you so much i i hope you guys are able to catch a lot of the films that are going to be live at midnight tonight through the 27th mm -hmm. So exciting. Yeah, a lot of really great, great special presentations, including yours. Um, so hopefully, hopefully you'll be able to check out some of those and um, take care, be safe, wear a mask. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Wear a mask. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Bye guys. Bye.